Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted unto you, and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. So, who is on the Lord's side? Number one. One who has received the free gift of forgiveness and eternal life through Jesus. Are you ready for number two? Who is on the Lord's side? Number two. One who has chosen to honor the leadership of the Holy Spirit in his life. Please write it down. How do I know that I am on the Lord's side? By your degree of submission to the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Romans chapter 8 and verse 9. Please listen to this message again. Send it to someone that you know and you love. It says, but ye are not in the flesh. But in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. It says, now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, help me, he is none of his. That means if you do not have the Spirit of Christ and if you are not submitting to the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Jesus gave us the Holy Spirit to guide us. Listen to my teachings on the Holy Spirit. You can get them on Koinonia Global. I teach essentially that the Holy Spirit has a threefold ministry. He has a ministry to creation. He has a ministry to unbelievers. He has a ministry to believers. His ministry to creation is that he's the life force. He is the very factor that keeps everything alive, as we know. Withdraw the Holy Spirit and still leave the sun and the air. Creation will die. Number two, his ministry to unbelievers is the ministry of conviction and conversion. That he convicts men of sin, of righteousness and judgment, and then he engenders the administration of salvation. His ministry to believers is threefold. The ministry of activating your spiritual organs. We call it being alive unto God. Then the ministry of revelation. Bringing you insight and illumination. Then the ministry of empowerment. There are others like the ministry of guidance, you know, and all of these things. Get it and listen to it very carefully. Are we together? Who is on the Lord's side? One who has chosen to honor the leadership of of the Holy Spirit. Romans chapter 8 from verse 14 to 17. Romans 8. Romans 8, 14 to 17. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are what? The sons of God. Reading to 17. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, he is called, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. 16. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirits that we are the children of God. In other words, that we are on the Lord's side. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. The ministry of the Holy Spirit. Let's rush. Number three. Who is on the Lord's side? One who has chosen to submit. Please write. One who has chosen to submit to the supremacy of the word of God in all matters. Who is on the Lord's side, especially in these end times? One who has chosen to submit to the supremacy of the word of God in all matters. The supremacy, that means the word of God takes preeminence in all and every matter of your life. It is one of the characteristic, uh, characteristic definitions of a Christian. One who has submitted to the authority, the supremacy of the word of God. That what the direction of the word of God is where you go. You live by the word. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. Submitting to the supremacy of the word of God in all matters. It is one of the biblical indices for even measuring spiritual maturity. You are spiritually mature to the degree to which you have allowed the word of God to govern your life. 
that your life is is totally under the influence of the word of god you have made up your mind to walk and to live in keeping with the word of god are we together number four are you ready for this who is on the lord's side number four one who has chosen to live a life of consecration and sacrifice write that down and don't assume please that you know what i'm saying just write and listen number four one who has chosen to live a life of consecration and sacrifice second corinthians chapter 6 from verse 14 to 18 it says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion has light with darkness? Uh huh. We're reading to 18. And what concord has Christ with Belial? And what part has he that believeth with an infidel? 16. And what agreement had the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. And as God had said, I will dwell in them and walk in them and i will be their god and they shall be my people 17. wherefore it says come out from among them this is the definition of consecration come out from among them and be ye separate not be ye critical not be ye sarcastic come out from among them and be ye separate said the lord and touch not the unclean thing and i will receive you verse 18. he says and i will be a father unto you and you shall be my sons and my daughters saith the lord god almighty please look up for many believers the idea of consecration is only to come out of a life of sin and that is very important but I have taught you that consecration is beyond the issue of sin. There are many good things. Look up, please. If you walk with God, there are many things that are not sinful and evil that you will still need to come out of. In, 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 are we together now? Consecration is not just the matter of what is bad or sinful. No. There are many things. It is, it is the constraining power. To be able to honor and keep your call, your mantle, your mandate. So there are many people who are not sinful, but they are not consecrated. Let me tell you the truth. One of the characteristic features of consecration is that you cannot say yes to everything. And including good things. This is what many people don't like. Evil things, fine. That's, that's fine. But there are many things. It says all things are lawful. But not all things are expedient. I hope you like what I'm teaching. Let me show you two more scriptures. Who is on the Lord's side? Consecration. First John chapter 2 from verse 15 to 17. Apostle John now. Love not the world. I've taught it here. Is the Greek word eros. An ungodly affinity. He's not saying don't have money or don't have material possession. People have erroneously thought that, that was, that's what he was saying. No, no, not at all. Neither the things that are in the world. Look up, please. If any man love the world, he says the love of the Father is not in him. What are the things? He categorizes everything in the world into three. One, the lust of the flesh. Two, the lust of the eyes. Three, the pride of life. He says it's not of the Father bodies of the world 17 it says give us 17 please and the world passeth away and the lost thereof it says but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever please look up how do I know that I am on the Lord's side if it is the God of the Bible you are walking with as you begin to walk with God and the more you rise there are certain constraints that God will start putting in your life. Some of them may not be general constraints. I'm explaining to you the full extent of what it means to be consecrated. Can I tell you, especially if you're in ministry, I want you to listen here. Every call and every anointing has a consecration that protects it. If you are Samson, beware of your hair. If you are Elijah, beware of your prayer life. Are we together now? It's not just enough to say, I want a double portion. I want, if you receive a man's anointing and do not study the consecration to keep it, you will lose it. 
you will lose it for sure. God can become so meticulous about your life that he will even put certain constraints in your life. It may not be a general rule for everybody. For instance, do you know because of the nature of your work, the nature of your call and the dealings of God with you, God can give you an instruction and say for you and your wife, you shouldn't have more than two children. Now, it was the same God who said be fruitful, but he has weighed you from the lens of destiny and he has seen that your best position for efficiency is with two children. You can choose to disobey him and have, you know, whatever number. And then you will find out that that act of disobedience will become a weight. So the Bible says, seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses it says let us lay aside two things number one every weight then number two the sin number one every weight number two the sin most believers focus on the sin part and they don't focus on the weight part that's why you see if if you are really working with god please let me have your attention do you know why God will often ask you to make ridiculous sacrifices as you walk with him? It's not that God wants the money or the car. Why would God sit down and say, empty your bank account? What does he want to do with the money? There is something he's doing to you. He's breaking that hold. He can bring back the money. Why will he call Abraham and say, sacrifice Isaac? Why didn't he just say, look, Abraham, I want you to be serious with me? No. I do not know one man who is mightily used by God who did not go through the school of consecration and sacrifice. I cannot begin to tell you the things I have laid down for this God. There are some of you, if it's the issue of sin with speed, oh, I love you, Lord Jesus. But the moment he begins to make a demand, that salary as it just entered, Give it to me. I rebuke that wicked spirit that wants me to suffer in this month of May. And God says, you see, huh. sacrifice. A time will come in the realm of the spirit where the only access code to a new dimension is sacrifice. Blood dripping on your altar. I know you may not like what you are hearing, but I love you too much to not tell you the truth. Sincerely. People admire power. People admire all kinds when they see God walking with people at certain dimensions. No. You want a life of miracles, signs and wonders? It's not just about reading scripture and saying, I believe. No. Try it. It won't work. There is a sacrifice. Let the fire from your altar touch my heart. Let the fire from your altar touch my heart. Let the fire from your altar touch my heart. That's what it takes to be on the Lord's side. Oh, speak from the heavens and the earth. Oh, speak from the heavens, and I'll hear it from the earth. My sacrifice is calling you, oh God. My sacrifice is calling you, oh God. Can I tell you what it means to be consecrated? To get to a point where there is nothing in your life you cannot give up for God. And until you get to that realm, I submit to you, there are certain levels of business you cannot do with God. This is not about impartation or just I believe. No. You've heard me. The price for all of God is all of you. Apostle, I'm a man of God. I want the Lord to give me the keys of nations. <laughs> when Peter and, and James met, you know, their mother met Jesus and said, Grant that when you have restored all things, my sons will sit down at your left and right. He said, the space is available, but can you drink of my cup and be baptized with my baptism?
who is on the Lord's side, the person who makes up his mind that whatever it will take, if I will lose myself and my ego and my honor for him, so be it. If I will lose my reputation for his majesty, so be it. If all my crowns and my achievements fall like Dagon before the ark for his sake, so be it. I'm teaching you authentic Bible consecration. Now, let me tell you one truth. God is not interested in anything you own. He's interested in his space and his position in your life. So when he touches those things, it's because he has found out that those things, you have allowed those things to grow. The relationship, the money, you started becoming a celebrity and celebrity mindset exalted you. You pushed God and sat on the throne. So when he begins, when God says, sold your finances, or what does it do? What, what, what will he do with the money? He said, if, if I need something, is it you I'll come and ask to give me? Please hear me. I'm saying this because some of you are in a season of pruning and dealing. It looked like it, everything God is stripping you naked and you are saying God is it that you want to disgrace me I'm explaining to you what he's doing he's bringing you to the Lord's side who is on the Lord's side one who has died truly to himself that you can hold a billion naira and God says give it for me and you say your majesty if it is for you I lay it down you get to a point where absolutely nothing can take his place. That is the realm you will see wealth that you have never seen. You will see levels of the anointing that you cannot be able to explain. Let me tell you, for as long as you are still using God to build an empire, for as long as you are still using God to build church, as long as you are still using the name of Jesus like a bribe to build a reputation for yourself, I submit to you and trust me I know what I'm saying you see what the Lord did across in Manchester I know that people will see these things and say wow it's just the grace of God I agree but from a standpoint of consecration don't downplay what consecration can do you would you will use formulas and it will not work but when you die he comes to resurrect you by himself so that anything he gives you is his own You've heard me teach you that the reason why you put your money in the bank is not because you know the bank manager. In fact, it's not even because you like the bank. You put your money in the bank because the day you need it, they can give you. Am I right on that? The day you go to the bank and say, give me my one million, and they tell you stories, you will report them. This is what causes banks to go down. That there are so many customers who want to withdraw their monies, and it looks like for whatever reason, they cannot give them. If you, if you place one billion in the bank, you are happy. If somebody transfers money, he did not put it in your pocket, but he sent it to an account that the bank gave you, and you are happy. You start rejoicing. I've gotten money. Was, is, is the bank your own? But it's because you know the ease of withdrawal was where your confidence came from. That's the same thing with God. The moment everything he has that he gives you remains his own in experience ladies and gentlemen you will lay up gold as dust trust me there are many of you who have tried this prosperity thing and it's not working sometimes you need to just close those books and lie down on the ground it's not just by no wealth in this kingdom is a trust it's not an achievement other people can say, I achieved this. But there are people, he, he gave on to some five. He gave on to some two. Is somebody listening to me? Yes. Consecration. Who is on the Lord's side? The one who can say, my life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself. I give myself to you and mean what you are saying my life is not my own that means your ministry too that means the children too that means the house and cars when you say my life 
you can't say my, my spirit is not my own but my bank account is my own my life means everything in my life this language of my thing my business my money if you mean that in terms of administration and all of that i understand but in terms of ownership is the mistake of the rich fool get my teaching the rich young ruler a clarion call for this generation who is on the lord's side one who has decided that everything I have belongs to him. That what he wants is what I do. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Have your way, Lord. Don't sing it if you don't believe it. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Oh Lord. See, the people you admire today that we call fathers that are being used these were the songs that they sang when they had nothing they rolled on the floor shouting that song and they meant it kumbaya my lord kumbaya kumbaya my lord kumbaya Kumbaya, my Lord, Kumbaya, oh Lord. What is the meaning of this point? That for every time you walk with God, you have an assignment to search whether there is an idol growing in your heart. You don't have to be evil. You can give birth to children and all of a sudden that child can become an idol you can get married and that marriage becomes an idol you can win some kind of contract five billion ten billion and that's the end of it you and god god i will come back to your side when i finish the contract and for us men of god by the time God begins to lift you, listen to my message at the conference. I thought that there's something called the human cycle. Every time there is abundance and increase and rest, men usually become careless and complacent. Then they go down to a state of slumber and decadence as a natural result of comfort. And then in that point, they forget God. And usually they are consequently given to the hands of their enemies and then in the midst of their pain they are languishing they now begin to call upon the God of heaven he will usually send a prophet to warn them and say you have left your your way with me and they will repent with brokenness and genuine repentance and then he will bring them redemption then they get back to abundance then the cycle continues Every time God is lifting you, be careful because you are already at the corridors of falling. The higher you rise, the easier it is to fall. Because at that point, what is there now? I'm a big man, I'm a big woman. I have my estates, millionaire. My name is known all over. I hope God is speaking to us. Number five. Who is on the Lord's side? Can I continue? One who has chosen to be an active part of God's kingdom advancement agenda. One who has chosen to be an active part of God's kingdom advancement slash end time agenda. You can write it there. One who has chosen to be a part of God's kingdom advancement slash end time agenda. Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 8. 
one who has chosen to be a part of God's end time agenda this was Isaiah the prophet going through his dealings with God and he said also I heard the voice of the Lord saying whom shall I send and who shall go for us then Isaiah said here am I send me we use this for missionaries when we're looking for people to go to the mission field or to go to villages but it's not about missionaries alone he's saying which vessel because I am God but I need human vessels who will avail themselves for my purposes to come to pass and maybe I should just digress for a minute or two and teach you that the agenda of God I have taught you this when we talk about the project kingdom come or what we call kingdom advancement can I define it for you kingdom advancement refers to listen before you write kingdom advancement refers to every Huh? and any scriptural mechanism that is deployed to enthrone Christ and his purposes first in the hearts of men then across every strata of human activities this is what we call kingdom advance so when you say you are advancing the kingdom it doesn't just mean you are preaching or it doesn't just mean you are giving money to church it is that every scriptural mechanism that can be deployed that ultimately leads to the enthroning of Christ in the hearts of men are we together now and then seeing that Christ is enthroned across the strata of human activities and to achieve that God decided to make kingdom advance which is the same thing with his end time agenda the the, the program is threefold number one the first dimension of that kingdom agenda that you see is world evangelization that means saving the lost that is the first dimension it is in order of priority the most important but it's not the, on, the only the, the only program so world evangelization number two is the equipping of the saints this is the second program because the church is God's battle axe. the equipping of the saints then number three the transformation of society are you seeing it now so world evangelization the equipping of the saints then the saints that are now equipped and empowered start transforming society that's where we talk of the seven mountains now the mountain of religion the mountain of family the mountain of education the mountain of arts and entertainment the mountain of media the mountain of uh, what else again finance all those mountains people who are sent as sheep among wolves so you talk of the professionals the architects you talk of the, the the doctors and lawyers the politicians all the witnesses generally but in order of priority societies at the mercy of the transformation of the church so the believer world evangelization unbelievers become believers discipleship and equipping the saints now turn new believers into matured believers people who are of stature and stamina who are empowered they are now sent equipped with understanding and they, they, they penetrate systems and structures and they enthrone the purposes of Christ maybe I should say a word or two about the concept of what we have come to know in the body of Christ and I'm, I'm being respectful about this but I think it's good that since I'm speaking on this point of kingdom advance I understand a bit on this point and I submit to you that I think many preachers really do not understand the full import of what we call God's end time agenda we have all kinds of ideas and one of the most popular ideas is the concept of takeover maybe I should say a word about that I've had it been used sincerely so and and there are people who know what they're saying but um, listen to me believers when we talk about the idea of taking over systems and structures let me tell you what we mean and let me tell you what we do not mean we do not mean magically that from a physical standpoint that one day you know the West the developed first world nation will suddenly you know Africa will magically just become like that when we talk about takeover it's a spiritual language listen 
as far as territorial transformation is concerned, there are two things that God is interested in. Number one, the spirits of men. Second, their minds. Are we together now? The physical manifestation is a natural resultant effect of that. So when we are talking about taking over, we are not just talking about building industries alone and building houses and, you know, making Nigeria a modern Dubai. And No, 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 no. That, that, is, that, is, that is quite a mundane approach. The idea is the health of the spirits of men, then causing them to now sustain superior beliefs because the God of this world has an assignment to blind the minds of the people. Are we together now? I hope you know Jesus is coming soon. I doubt that we are going to live, perhaps, but I doubt that we are going to live maybe for the next 50 years or so. I really doubt. With the unfolding of events, so I'm not prophesying. And this is not a doctrine. It's just a discussion with my people. Are we together now? If you are together, say amen. amen. I really doubt because following the prophetic signposts that were given to us in scripture, we are already at the last phase of everything. That is the truth. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached as a witness. What happened in UK, what is happening across the globe is a testament that we are nearing the end of the end. Do you believe what you're hearing? And there are many of us here, the idea we have is that God just brought you through your parents and now that you're an adult, probably married with children, we have no definition as to what we're doing with our lives. And we feel that the only way to just bribe God to feel we still remember him is to come to church. But there is nothing pro-kingdom in our lives. The entire circumference of our lives is about the pursuit of money and the pursuit of whatever it is. I recommend for such people my teaching, What Seekest Thou? Please write it and look for it. You'll find it on Koinonia Global and listen to it very carefully. There I teach on the concept of true fulfillment and we examine a few things that in, in our wild quest, as we wake up in the morning and sleep late in the night, Sadly for many, only to eat the bread of sorrow, that there are so many things we are looking for. Listen, there, is an exact, there are exact activities on earth that an individual must be engaged in to find fulfillment. And the endless quest for financial resources was never supposed to be God's design for man. That is, that is uh, uh, and, and, uh, and I say this respectfully speaking, it cannot be God's idea that the moment you become an adult, for the rest of your life, as long as you breathe, you're looking for money. And then I look for money, then build a house, then finally just find out to my surprise that I am old. And then in regret and anger, I now begin to do all kinds of things and then you pass on. That does not look like an intelligent God's, God, uh, 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 God's, God's idea. God's idea is that we know him, access through the keys of the kingdom, the resources that make us to live excelling lives. Then they now grant us the comfort to face the matter of the kingdom. You do not have to be a preacher. This is not about preachers. Listen to my message redefining the coming revival. Every one of us has a role to play. What you call your purpose is simply the role you have to play in that big picture and you will never find true fulfillment until you find it lo i come in the volume of the book it is written concerning me for some of you your singular assignment on earth is that god will lift you you will become so powerful financially and make significant contributions towards kingdom come your first assignment if that is your mandate is to understand the economic system of the kingdom and then engage it until you become truly wealthy and then get to work. For some of you, you are sent to the fivefold apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. Your assignment is to know God, pass through a methodical mentorship, go through your dealing with God and then begin to unfold your mandates as they come. 
For some of you, you are empowered by God to penetrate the systems and structures, maybe through your career. God wants you to rise to an executive position and there use your influence alongside the results that has come from your life to promote the course of the kingdom. Your own assignment there will be now to excel, to go for secular knowledge and press to the highest level that now grants you capacity. But by all means, you must find out the role that you have to play. There is absolutely nobody here who does not have a part to play. And like I have taught you, if you do not play your part, it's like a relay. You know how a relay is? When you are running, someone is waiting to collect the baton and you delay another person's destiny. Imagine if our father in the Lord, Baba Deboye, did not discover his place in life. Hallelujah. Is God speaking to someone who is on the Lord's side? One who has chosen to be an active part of God's kingdom advancement agenda. You can pray, you can win souls, you can make active contributions as a financial apostle, you can excel in your career to attain onto a position of influence and use your influence like Daniel, use your influence like Joseph, use your influence like Esther. Listen, I want you to open this Bible and find where it is written concerning you. You will look at your life and you will find a parallel. If God has called you to be Esther, find Esther and study Esther. If God has called you to be John, find John. There will be a parallel of your assignment in scripture. When you find it, then be serious. If your assignment is Esther, make sure you, your, first, your first preparation is to be a good woman. So that when you get there, you will be able to support the program of God. If your assignment is Deborah, being good is not enough. You must understand the art of war because you are going to be a warrior. If you are Elijah, then you must master the art of prayer and the prophetic. If you are Daniel and you are praying alone, you are going to fail because what will exalt you is your excellence. Your prayer will be a personal affair that secures you. But what the nation will recognize you for is your intelligence and your excellence. An excellent spirit is what branded Daniel. Are we together? Let me give us the last one so we pray. Who is on the Lord's side? One who has chosen to walk in humility as a lifestyle. I like this. James 4, 6. Who is on the Lord's side? One who has chosen to walk in humility. Let's read it together. One, two, go. But he giveth more grace. Uh -huh. Wherefore he said, God resisted the proud. Ah. Look at me, ladies and gentlemen. What does it mean to resist? To resist means to push away. To stop from coming close or to stop from making progress. The Bible says that is what will happen to any man who decides to be proud. Let me give you a kind counsel. The moment God begins to lift you, whether financially or in business or in ministry, I want you to be intentional about being and remaining humble. One of the greatest ways to be and to remain on the Lord's side is humility. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. I know that the world has celebrated us over the historic feat that you know happened in 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 uk and we thank god for that we do not downplay that but i pray for you like i pray for myself that may success never enter you to a point that you forget that god is a doer of this say amen, amen. shout a loud amen. amen i'm praying for myself and i'm praying for our global family it's good to celebrate jesus and he will keep lifting us and doing so many things but ladies and gentlemen humility is powerful humility is a retainer of honor when you practice humility you retain your honor 
Pride is one of the fastest ways of losing anything God gives you. Anything. I don't care what it is. There are many people today who cannot be trusted with anything from God. You know why? Because of this arrogance. I am a millionaire. I'm a billionaire. Now you can see it. My houses and my cars, we say. I'm a man of God, having global influence across the globe. Especially when you have results to show. If you are proud and you don't have results, you are a fool. That one is not even pride. That's foolishness. Are we together? But there's something called the pride of life. The pride of life is where you have obvious results. You know, people, you can't contest against results. Once you have your results like a report card, you now have the credence to be proud. But I'm praying for you again that as he lifts you, as he blesses you, as he prospers you, as he announces you, may you by humility remain on the Lord's side. Watch this. The greatest miracle recorded in the Bible was Jesus' own resurrection from the dead. Not his raising others from the dead. His own rising from the dead by himself. And when Jesus rose up from the dead, I mean, you would think that Jesus should make news and blast it and drum it to everybody's head and go to the temple where he once flogged people and go everywhere. But as soon as he got up, you know where he went to? Straight he went to the disciples greeted them said touch my hands do this and that and they got to walk 40 more days he was teaching them because he was soon to leave finally the greatest enemy of great people is their current level of achievement now I'm not teaching you to downplay you see Philemon 1 and verse 6 says that the communication of your faith might be effectual Philemon 1 and 6 Philemon 1 6 that the communication of your faith might be effectual through the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you in Christ Jesus. So it is not humility to refuse to acknowledge. If God has blessed you, he has blessed you. If you are doing a good job, you are doing a good job. There is nothing wrong in celebrating the hand of God. But humility is where all the praises come to you and you lift it up and take it up. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. That's the quality of true humility. All the glory belongs. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. Beyond Joshua Selman, beyond Koinonia. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you. Hallelujah. So, when you receive a prophetic word here and God opens a door for you, you suddenly become a multi-millionaire, you become a billionaire. Remember, humility is the wisdom of great men. That's what keeps them. It's what brings longevity to your impact. You see, there is a natural temptation to want to rub it in. Where are all those who did not believe in me? Now that I'm a great man, let me slap it to your face. For No, 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 no. It's unnecessary. When Joseph became great, there was no need proving any point. If you are great, Ba, you are great. If God has given you this thing, he has given you. It's as simple as that. If you are rich, you are rich. If you are poor, uh, you can be rich. But, but at that point, of course, you are not... I'm, I'm, I'm trying to not speak negative, but I'm just saying if God has given you, he has given you, it's as simple as that. All this bragging and shouting and trying to raise dust and build a crown to yourself. My greatest joy in all the announcement, and by the way, let me say thank you to all those who acknowledge what Jesus did through us, published it yonder. I mean, I'm not on social media, but I heard the remarkable work. My greatest joy is that Jesus was glorified through that process. Unfortunately, whether you like it or not, to lift up Jesus, you are the one who is first lifted. Then if you are wise enough, you now lift him above you. And if he sees that you lift him above you, if he wants to go higher, how will he go higher? By lifting you more. You see how it works. So don't be surprised when you are lifted I'm saying we because remember I taught you that everything that happens is not Joshua Selman. 
I didn't go to UK. We went to UK. I didn't heal the sick. God healed the sick through us. And I mean what I'm saying. Your prayers, your giving, your sacrifice added to all that. Who is on the Lord's side? One who will choose in the midst of plenty and great, in the midst of glitz and glamour, in the midst of a celebrity life, in the midst of global recognition, to still remember to let your knees touch the ground, to acknowledge that he is good. For me, I've made up my mind as a principle and as a covenant that for the rest of my life, no matter where he leads me, no matter what he does through my life, it is an honor to serve his purposes for the many people my phone was full of so you can imagine and for for the few that I could respond to I would just tell them it's an honor and a privilege to be used by God hallelujah a life of humility apostle but we are we are really proud in our family repent repent there's no such thing as that take the stage Lord have your way I'm just a vessel and nothing more when you're done done announcing us please take the glory I'm satisfied just to see Lay your hands on your head and cry for the grace for genuine humility. Please pray. Please pray. Please pray. Lord, work on my tendencies for being arrogant. It is, it is, it is resident within me. The Lord tested you with a little result. A dimension of the anointing and arrogance will not even let you grow I want you to pray please pray cry from your heart no matter how much you lift me it will be to your glory no matter how much you give me it will be to your glory no matter how much you announce me oh let the nations know that I'm only an ambassador. Let the nations know that we are only products of your mercy and grace. Go ahead and make that declaration. Be lifted high. Be lifted high. In my spirit says, I just want to say, Baba. Whenever he lifts you, he lifts you so that he can be seen through you. Do not forget this. Whenever he lifts you, hear me, he lifts you so that he can be seen through you. And don't just do a religious glory to God and your life is just suffering through pride. When you are genuinely humble, it, it shows. There are many people who just say glory to God just to ease the guilt of looking proud. But all around littered is the stench of pride. When you learn to decrease so that he will increase, 
the reward you get is that you are lifted higher so that you will lift him higher I told you here you've heard me and I'm speaking to a global family years ago the Lord spoke to me and said son if you will let men see me there is nothing I will not give you for every one of the days after the conference when I returned back I just went to my room and knelt down and said Lord your boy is here no matter what they say let the nations clap thank you for the miracles but this is the one you took from nothing and you have brought here for the grace that you have given me I can never repay you but from my heart I'm saying Lord that I thank you for the wisdom you have given us we can never repay you but from my heart we're saying Lord that I the hands of someone close to you we're wrapping up who is on the Lord's side I've given you six keys number one one who has genuinely submitted to the Lordship of Jesus Christ number two one who has submitted to the leadership of the Holy Spirit to guide you you may look foolish but like we always sing that when he holds your hands, we brought our tiny little hands full of ignorance and placed it over the hand of this great God. And he held that small hand and watch what he's doing with it. Never downplay the Holy Spirit. He will take you to nations and he will not just produce wonders. He will make your life an unending epistle. It is true. Number three, who is on the Lord's side? one who has chosen as an act of your will and by understanding to submit to the supremacy of the word that the word is exalted in your life above and beyond culture above and beyond status above and beyond whatever it is your sociological context the word of god has gained ascendance and supremacy your mind has become renewed and transformed even by the word who is on the lord's side for one who has made up his mind to live a consecrated life and a life of sacrifice a life that gives everything to him number six number five who is on the lord's side the fifth person who is on the lord's side is one who has made up his mind what's number five again one who has made up his mind to be an active part of god's program that for as long as I live, the kingdom must find expression through me. As God is looking for men, there must be something that I do. If I can't preach, I will pray. If I can't pray, I will give. In fact, you should pray, but I will give. I will use my profession. I will use my life. I will use my influence. I will use my resources. I will spend and be spent to see Jesus revealed to the nations. And finally, who is on the Lord's side? Number six, one who has chosen a choice to walk in humility as a lifestyle. Humility meaning that Jesus will always be seen intentionally so as the reason behind your results. That as men celebrate you, as men call you names, they are free to do so because the glory goes to the Lord but the honor is to the saints. So as he lifts you, as he empowers you, as he blesses you, as he gives you visibility, please do not forget this preacher's voice. You will hear it in your dreams. You will hear it when you are far away from me. You may be far from me, but be on the Lord's side. Use the weapon of humility. Don't be ashamed to get down on your knees and let the world know that you have been lifted by him. That you are sustained by him they may say it's out of fashion it is fashionable to be the celebrity 
and you tell them he has blessed me enough and I'm, I'm grateful. He's kept the honor, but let him take the glory. Hallelujah. In one minute, I'd like you to pray while holding hands. Pray these five into your life. I don't know which of them you are and which of them you are not. These six points I meant to say. Open your mouth and pray. I want to be on the Lord's side. Perhaps when it has to do with salvation, we can say you're on the Lord's side. But when it has to do with consecration and sacrifice, we may not say so for you. Perhaps when it has to do with humility, we cannot say you're on the Lord's side. I'd like you to use tonight's teaching to close that gap. I truly desire to be on the Lord's side now and forever. We have one minute. Cry to God. On the Lord's side as a preacher. On the Lord's side as a businessman. On the Lord's side as a Nigerian. On the Lord's side as a prestigious part of this global family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep your hands together. I want to pray a prayer and then we're done. Lord, if you're healing someone in this nation, don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Lord, if you're lifting nations in this season, don't do it without me. You're blessing nations in the city. As a family of faith and we declare that we remain ever available we thank you for showing us profound mercy you have singled us out as a people and you have chosen to honor us not just the week past you have invested your honor and your grace upon our lives and Lord we declare I declare on behalf of your people that we have chosen to be on the Lord's side in the name of Jesus Christ we declare that you grant unto us as individuals and as a ministry longevity of impact in the name of Jesus Christ and Lord we pray that everything that can become a distraction to our kingdom pursuit let it be far from us Lord I'm praying for someone I'm praying for a family that may be discouraged right now it looks like you have not seen a performance of the word of god you have celebrated as a global family but individually you are yet to see certain results i agree with you because you are now determined to be on the lord's side may the power that is on the lord's side work for you may the wisdom that is on the lord's side work for you 
May the speed that is on the Lord's side work for you. May the immunity that is on the Lord's side work for you. May the restoration that is on the Lord's side work for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. This week I declare over your life by the power that raised Jesus from the dead, return with results. This will be a week of strange evidences in your life. Whatever it takes to be fruitful, whatever it takes to be a worthy ambassador, I empower you with it right now in Jesus' name. And I rebuke the hand of Satan over your life in the name of Jesus Christ. That by tomorrow, even up until next week, you will return with strange testimonies. I declare protection over you. I declare preservation over you. I command favor upon your life. Your prayer life will never go down. Your word study life will never go down. Supernatural revelation by the Spirit. Let the mantle of honor rest on you. Shame and reproach is far from your life. You indeed will show yourself as a people that God has helped. In the name of Jesus Christ. Wave your hands to Jesus and give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. We're about to share the grace. Please let me encourage you just two instructions. Just two instructions. Number one, listen to this message again. Please, listen to this message again. Who is on the Lord's side? Meditate upon it. Listen to it again. And then number two, as God grants you grace, please listen to the message, What seekest thou? I want you to listen to it and God will grant you grace. Have you been blessed tonight? Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.